From News 19, I'm meteorologist Daniel Bonds. Obviously, the big story that we are tracking is tropical storm, soon to be Hurricane Helene. Do have storm surge warnings in effect for a large part of the western coast of Florida. You can see those storm surge warnings there as the storm continues to get a little bit stronger. Also, do have tropical storm watches and warnings in effect for a large portion of Florida, even tropical storm watches parts of Georgia and South Carolina and hurricane warnings now in effect for a large part of the panhandle of Florida all the way up to parts of Georgia. These kind of pink areas here. Those are the hurricane watches that are now in effect for us here across South Carolina. We do have a tropical storm watch in effect for the low country of South Carolina. So what does that mean for us? That does mean the potential for tropical storm force winds in that area within the next 48 hours. So those are the only tropical storm advisories for the Palmetto State at this point. Here's the 8 a.m. advisory for Tropical Storm Helene. Does have winds of 70 miles per hour, gust up to 75, moving towards the northwest at 9 miles per hour. It's about 100 miles west, southwest off the western tip of Cuba at this point. Here's the latest forecast from the National Hurricane Center. It's going to continue to gain some strength, become a hurricane it looks like at some point today, become a major hurricane tomorrow before making landfall, and then it's going to turn a little bit more towards the north and west as it does interact with land. So a storm we are going to continue to monitor. The spaghetti model is in very good agreement with this particular storm. This is through early Friday morning. This here this polygon is the official polygon from the National Hurricane Center, and you'll notice all those models are within that polygon. Here's our in-house forecast model, how it kind of sees things over the next few days as that storm will continue to kind of get a little bit stronger, become a major hurricane it looks like for tomorrow, and then make landfall at some point late Thursday and or early Friday. You'll notice our forecast model is a little bit farther east compared to the National Hurricane Center's forecast, but really the impact for us is basically the same. You'll notice it continues to move generally towards the north and eventually more towards the north and west. It will weaken, but it's going to be moving pretty quickly. It's going to dump a lot of rain across parts of the southeast. Unfortunately for us, we're going to be in the right front quadrant of the storm at some point. It looks like very early Friday morning. So what does that mean for us? We're expecting very gusty winds. There will be the possibility for some heavy downpours that could lead to some flash flooding. And we can't rule out the possibility for some tornadic activity, especially early Friday morning. So you do want to have multiple ways to get weather warnings. Short term today, small chance for a pop up shower, a thunderstorm. And then as we do look ahead towards tomorrow, we're starting off with some clouds. That moisture will continue to kind of stream in. This is 7 o'clock Thursday morning. You see those showers already moving through parts of the Midlands. Some heavy downpours will be likely. This is noon on Thursday. Still do have those heavy downpours and showers moving through. We may get a little bit of a break in the activity during the evening hours, at least latest information from our in-house forecast model. But then as we go into very early parts of Friday morning, this is Friday at 4 o'clock, those heavier bands of rainfall will move in. And this will be when we'll have that potential for some tornadic activity, some very strong winds possible as well. 8 o'clock Friday morning, still more the same as the system kind of lifts more towards the north and west. Still some rain mid morning on Friday. As we get into the afternoon hours of Friday, those rain chances will decrease and we'll likely get a little bit of sunshine before the day is done. Rainfall forecast through Friday at three o'clock. You'll notice not a lot of rain in the eastern half of the Midlands, but kind of along and just west of I-77, those rainfall totals do increase. And then those rainfall totals increase even more in the upstate of South Carolina. So there's going to be a little bit of a difference in rainfall amounts. Now, this could change if the track shifts a little bit more towards the east. These rainfall totals may shift as well and vice versa. Regardless, it does look like there's going to be a lot of rain across South Carolina, including the Midlands. Here's the Midlands rainfall forecast. So this is a little bit of a closer look, and you will notice in the eastern half of the Midlands, not as much, but you go a little bit farther west, those rainfall totals do increase. Once again, this could change a little bit from west to east, just depending on the eventual track of the system. So we'll be watching that. 
As of right now, the most rain is expected to fall in the upstate of South Carolina, the mountains of Tennessee, and probably even northeastern parts of Georgia. Now, this would be through early Friday morning. You'll notice possibly over a foot of rain in those areas. So excessive rainfall, the greatest threat is going to be in the upstate of South Carolina. That's going to be Wednesday and Thursday. You'll notice the threat for flooding does expand a little bit for us tomorrow, in particular tomorrow night and early parts of Friday. So that's what we'll have to watch for, the threat for some flooding. There is a flood watch in effect for the upstate of South Carolina until 2 o'clock Friday afternoon. Over the next seven days, we're talking about anywhere from about two to three, maybe four inches of rain. Upstate probably getting a little bit more of that according to the Weather Prediction Center. As far as the tropical storm force wind chances are concerned, small chance for tropical storm force winds, but those gusts may cause some issues. Here's our wind gust forecast. Now this is early Friday morning. Notice those gusts, 35, 40 miles per hour. Again, Hopefully this is being overdone a touch, but our in-house forecast model is showing very strong gusty winds early Friday morning. No doubt this would be knocking out some power. This would knock down some tree limbs and some trees possibly. Even as we go into about 9 o'clock Friday morning, still very strong winds. Gradually these winds will start to weaken a little bit as we go into Friday afternoon. Wind gust forecast a little bit closer to the Midlands. Again, I hope this is overdone, but you'll notice those wind forecast gusts very, very high at this point. So there is the potential we could have some very strong winds. Power outages do believe will be an issue early Friday morning as those strong and gusty winds move through. This will be six o'clock. You're talking about some moderate power outages. Could even see some high power outages in some areas. Wouldn't doubt that at all if we do get those stronger winds. Severe weather threat, small threat for today. But as we go into especially Thursday night and the early parts of Friday, that's when the Severe weather threat will be the greatest, with the greatest threat being tornadic activity because we'll be in the right front quadrant of the storm. So Thursday night through early Friday morning, that's our time frame, heavy downpours, flooding will be possible, severe weather, including tornadoes and gusty winds. So probably want to stay off the roads early Friday morning, late Thursday night, and you do want to have multiple ways to get those weather warnings. You never want to drive through or walk through flooded areas. Mentioned this a second ago, have multiple ways to get weather warnings, stay away from down power lines, and avoid contact with flood water. So cell phone, weather radio, and obviously local TV and radio, a good way to get those warnings if and or when we do have some severe weather late Thursday and or early Friday. Good news is the weekend is looking pretty good, according to the European model. Looks like a lot of sunshine on Saturday. American model showing a good bit of sunshine as well. So once we get past really early Friday morning, the weather does improve a little bit. Can't rule out a small chance for a pop-up shower or thunderstorm today across the Midlands with highs in the mid to upper 80s. And we are tracking the tropics, obviously Thursday and early parts of Friday. The weekend looking a lot better though, as temperatures will be warming up into the mid 80s. There is that chance for rip currents along the coastal region of South Carolina. Weekend forecast for Myrtle Beach, not bad on Saturday with highs in the lower 80s. Charleston in the mid 80s on Saturday and Sunday under partly cloudy skies. And then as we do look towards the upstate, a few showers possible Saturday and Sunday. Uh, as we do look ahead, 8 to 14 days out, October 2nd through October 8th, slightly warmer than normal conditions for, I will say, a large portion of the Palmetto State. And we do expect close to near normal rainfall conditions across South Carolina, at least for most of South Carolina. But pay close attention to the weather over the next several days. Any shift in the track or strength in tropical future Hurricane Helene will make a difference in what we see across the Midlands.